Hi, this is Tony Fowler again. Uh, this is the second part in the short series of uh, uh, videos describing the bandsaw that I made. In this video, we're going to look at what I call the lower fabricated sub-assembly. Uh, this is a, a steel structure which is used to bolt the gearbox to, which uh, the wheel bolts on the lower wheel bolts onto as well. Uh, we'll also see how I uh, arrange to uh, mount in bearings uh, a five-step pulley which will be driven by the motor. Uh, also on this uh, sub-assembly uh, is a machine surface where the lower blade guides will go and be adjustable. Uh, the, the need for adjustability is because the table is going to be able to be tilted from 90 degrees to 45 degrees for cuts at an angle and we'll also uh, see how the table pivots on uh, uh, that, that sub-assembly so let's get into it. The gearbox on it's made out of uh, three millimeter sheet steel here it is mounted onto the gearbox itself uh, that bracket was then welded onto a cross tube which will perform many functions Okay, well now I've got the uh, wheel and gearbox on the bracket that I've made before and uh, it's welded to this uh, cross tube. I've just got it in the vise to more or less simulate what it will be like when uh, it's welded to the main frame of the bandsaw and basically just to check how rigid this turned out. Well, that, that feels absolutely solid. I can see how that rope if I put input into the uh, gearbox which has got a 25 to 1 reduction approximately you can see how it will turn the wheel. Here is the lower sub-assembly largely finished the gearbox mounting bracket and the table mounting cross tube have been welded in place uh, the guide mounting has been drilled and tapped and machined flat to take the guides. Uh, let's see some of the machining. Well this is the lower guide block and its uh, mounting bracket. The mounting bracket fits onto the uh, piece on the lower sub-assembly that we've just seen being machined. Uh, there will be three slots put into the mounting bracket. In, order. in these upside down views we can see the gearbox and wheel bolted to the lower subframe. Uh, we can also see how that bolts onto the saw table and can pivot up to 45 degrees. Uh, this allows for um, angle cutting uh, at 40, up to 45 degrees as well as at uh, 90 when it's in the flat position. Uh, so now the time has come to um, mount the gearbox on the table of the moon machine so that I can machine the uh, uh, mounting bracket for the various bearings. Now this face here on the, the back cover is machined and that should be true to the axis uh, the input uh, axis which is at the back here so I'm hoping that just with a small amount that I can get with the uh, 321 blocks mounting off the, the mill table here um, I'm hoping that that's going to hold this rigid enough and true enough to be able to to do that machining. The gearbox is now mounted on the uh, table of the milling machine and it's aligned with this surface under here and supported by two 321 blocks. Checking and then double checking the uh, alignment of the gearbox surface. Once the gearbox was set up on the mill, it was aligned with the input shaft. The sub-assembly was then bolted to the gearbox and a hole for the bearing block 
was machined which would then be true and concentric to the input shaft of the gearbox. Uh, this is the um, a view from the gearbox side of the bearing block which was a tight fit in the hole. This is the view from the other side of the plate. Uh, once the bearing block was uh, pressed into the steel uh, piece, uh, a shrink fit aluminium sleeve was uh, pressed over the rest of it to give added support. Two standoffs, as we can see here, were welded to the lower subframe. Uh, these are to support uh, an aluminium plate which will take the outer bearing for the pulley shaft. Well, now I've got the uh, welded up mounting bracket bolted onto the, the gearbox so uh, th this needs to uh, be set up true to the, uh, uh, to the gearbox axis itself. We saw earlier how that was uh, uh, arranged. Now uh, here I've got them welded on uh, uprights which the flat plate will bolt onto the bearing carrier plate. Now I've already measured with the vernier height gauge the height of these um, two standoffs and this, this one is high by about 0.1 millimeter which I need to uh, machine down. Um, I was quite amazed it was only 0.1 of a millimetre because, considering it was a welded uh, assembly. Uh, so now I'm ready to mill the top of this flat so that uh, both standoffs will be true to the axis and at the same height. So I've got the, it's a brand new milling cutter. It's running quite slowly because, of course, with a welded structure, it's relatively flexible and chatter could be a problem. So I've got quite a slow feed on this. It's only a thousand RPM on a half-inch milling cutter. So the surface speed's quite low. I've got relatively low overlap, so the amount of cutting is small. And all this is to reduce the cutting forces uh, to avoid chatter. And that seems to be successful as you can see here. There's no sign of chatter at all. We know that the plate mounting uh, uprights are uh, machined flat and true to the axis of the bore where the uh, shaft for the pulley will go. Um, the next stage is to align the table of the mill with the bore of the bearings I'm going to put in here to hold this end of the, uh, uh, the, the pulley shaft. Uh, so I've got the centering gauge set up in here. I'll just start rotating it. And if I adjust that... I can get that to uh, probably less less than a quarter of a thou or so, which is uh, about as good as one could expect with something like this. This was a piece of aluminium plate about six millimeter thick that I found in the scrap bin which was uh, just about the ideal size to get the bearing carrier out of bearing carrier plate out of. Well I previously uh, centered the machine on this bearing carrier down here and I'd also uh, previously uh, checked that uh, the gearbox was level in this direction and this direction so now that I've got the bearing, the outer uh, bearing carrier plate um, mounted on here, I need to machine this concentric with this and in line. So uh, as everything's been previously aligned, it should be ready to go. So in order to avoid chatter, I'm taking uh, very light uh, cuts at a very low speed. 
uh, because with an assembly like this on a tube reel or fray, uh, chatter can always be a problem. But there's no chatter at all with this at the uh, speeds and uh, depth of cut that I'm doing. So. It's, it's going to be a slow process because I'm only taking small cuts at a time. Well here is the finished version of the uh, plate that we've just seen being machined and bored. Uh, to the right is the bearing housing which will be pressed into that uh, hole in the middle. This is the bearing housing after it's been pressed into the plate. Uh, note that the two mounting holes have been countersunk. Uh, using countersunk screws locates the plate uh, quite accurately after it's been removed and uh, replaced. It would have required tight fitting dowels to have uh, provided the same amount of uh, location had I not used countersunk screws. This is the other side of the plate. Uh, even though uh, the bearing housing was uh, an interference fit in the plate as a belt and braces uh, method I've drilled and tapped two holes on the join line between the housing and the plate uh, for a couple of um, screws which give positive location. Well the drive mechanism is now uh, all totally uh, assembled. Uh, the bearing bracket that we saw being made uh, earlier has got the bearing fitted. It's bolted on over the shaft for the pulleys and uh, the, the efforts of uh, ensuring that this was um, concentric seem to have paid off because as you can see with this it spins pretty freely which it wouldn't do unless the two bearings at each end of the shaft uh, were concentric. Um, bear in mind that this is driving a, a 25 to 1 gearbox so most of that friction slowing that down is actually in the gearbox rather than in the, uh, the, the drive system here with the two bearings. Um, so when I've actually got a belt on here, the, remember this is upside down at the moment, the belt will be coming this way, the pull on this plate is this way, so the fact that it's only um, about six millimeter thick um, won't matter because it's got all the strength in uh, this, this direction. Uh, so here it is turned it uh, 90 degrees now. Uh, if you remember from before underneath the um, pulley in here uh, I mounted a block onto here which carries two small bearings so there's a shaft through there through the pulley and then we've got uh, the plate on the end which also carries um, a little boss which carries the outer bearing so that the pulley and shaft are supported at each end in bearings and it's not placing any lateral load on the input shaft of the, the gearbox. Uh, the output shaft of the, the, the gearbox here uh, it was designed to uh, support um, uh, the, the weight of a, a Segway and the person on it so this will take quite a bit of lateral loading because the um, uh, the bandsaw wheel will be on here and it will be loaded uh, laterally from the tension in the bandsaw blade. Uh, so here all of the tension in the uh, pulley going to the motor will be taken care of by the two bearings in their housings that are fitted here. Uh, well that's an end of uh, part two of the series of videos describing the bandsaw uh, that I made. Uh, you can get a full description of the uh, complete build on homemadetools.net on the uh, a full address that you can see up above. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Moto Chassis, uh, for other videos related to motorcycles and machining topics.